Hey everyone, in this video, I will look into uh, the agents concept in Langchain and how you can use this to do some basic data analysis on a standard CSV file and the data I will take from Kaggle. Uh, but first, uh, let's quickly uh, go through these uh, documentation of agents in the Langchain official documentation. So it says that some applications will require not just a predetermined chain of calls to large language models or other tools, but potentially an unknown chain that depends on the user's input. In these chains, there is an agent which has access to a suite of tools depending on the user input. The agent can then decide which, if any, of these tools to call. The documentation further says agents use an LLM to determine which actions to take and in what order. An action can either be using a tool and observing its output or returning to the user when used correctly. Agents can be extremely powerful. And that is indeed true because uh, I'm seeing many people are using these Langchain agents to do some really creative and innovative work. Let's just proceed. In order to uh, load agents, you should understand the following concepts. First one is tool. A function that performs a specific duty. This can be things like Google search, database lookup, Python, REPL, uh, other chains. The interface for tools is currently a function that is expected to have a string as an input with a string as an output. Then a large language model, the large language model powering the agent here. So uh, for this exercise, I'll be using uh, OpenAI API. So that will be hitting the OpenAI uh, LLM model. And finally, the agent, the agent to use. This should be a string that refines a support agent class because this notebook focuses on the simplest, highest level API. This only covering using the standard supported agents. If you want to implement a custom agent, see the documentation. All right. Um, yeah. And I am going to specifically use CSV agent today in this exercise. And you can find the documentation right here under agents. You go to toolkits. And within toolkits, the very first one is CSV agent. And there are many more other agents, as you can see, JSON agents. Then I have uh, OpenAI agents, Natural Language API, Pandas Data Frame agent, Python agent, SQL database, and Vector Store agents. So I am in my VS Code now. Uh, the very first step, of course, you need to install Langchain and OpenAI. Uh, and you can just run this command here. And then uh, I have downloaded, uh, okay, uh, here you need to set your OpenAI API token, of course. So I'm doing it with OS.environment. And then uh, from this link in Kaggle, I'm downloading a super simple and very small data set uh, of CSV file. This is World Happiness Report, uh, which has uh, the happiness score right here in one of the column. And then there are various metric of happiness, for example, GDP per capita, social support, etc., etc. So first, I'm just reading it with uh, uh, with pandas and checking uh, the very basic things like the shape of the data set, etc. Uh, I have 156 rows and nine columns. All right, so there ends my manual analysis of the data because I'm going to do the rest of the analysis with my Lang Langchain agent. So for that, you need to activate the Langchain agent. Uh, you run these two column, these two command, these two actually lines here for. Uh, and once you run these two, uh, these two lines, that is importing the relevant module, uh, you actually create the agent here. And uh, for my CSV agent, I'm making use of this create CSV agent method, which is coming from Langchain. And I'm passing the OpenAI with the relevant configuration. The, so the first configuration is temperature. I'm setting it at zero, which uh, determines or controls how creative your answers could be. And uh, next, I'm passing the input CSV file, that is actual data that this agent will look into. And verbose is true, so that I can actually see what the uh, what the agent is thinking or what are the steps it is going through before it is arriving at its final answer. And in below, we will see that when we uh, ask the agent to do any specific task, it actually first shows me its thinking process. And that's what you will see when you set verbose equal to true. All right, now a little quick word on these create CSV agent method. So I just went into Langchain source code and uh, uh, this is the definition of create CSV method. Uh, very much what it's doing is uh, uh, it is uh, actually executing another method called create pandas data frame agent. And uh, create CSV method says that it creates CSV agent by loading to a uh, data frame and using pandas agent. All right, so this uh, we have to actually look into this create pandas data frame agent because that's a function that is getting executed under it. So I went into the definition of this method as well, and this is that method. 
All right, so this create pandas data frame agent soil, it takes a lot of argument. The most important part uh, is that uh, it constructs a pandas agent from an LLM and a data frame. And the very first thing, it will check that if the input is indeed a data frame, otherwise it will raise this value error. And the next important thing is the tools that is uh, this agent is using and the tool it's using is Python AST REPL tool. Now, this particular class has been defined somewhere else in the Langchain's uh, source code. We can just see the very basics uh, of this class. So basically, uh, the, uh, this is an execution of the Python RDPL or Ripple as it's uh, pronounced. So Python RDPL is read, eval, print loop is an uh, interactive programming environment that allows you to execute Python code one line or block at a time immediately seeing the results as well it's a it's a valuable tool for testing debugging and exploring python code and libraries so in the context of create pandas data frame agent that is this method that we are looking at right now these uh, python ast repl tool class that is uh, this one is a custom implementation of the general python repl designed to work with the uh, zero shot agent and you find a zero shot agent right here so that's another agent that uh, that this uh, my csv agent is using so uh, now with the, in the context of this method these uh, python ast repl tool this instance has the data frame in its local context meaning the agent can execute code that interacts with the data frame by using python repl tool like a python ast repl tool here the zero shot agent can perform complex tasks with the given data frame and access its values and functions while maintaining a safe and controlled execution environment that's the whole thing that's the whole story that is going on here and we will see in a second that these with this RPL tool, we can even uh, do some basic plotting uh, right in my notebook by just giving the agent a text based uh, instruction. All right, coming back to the main code. Uh, so after we have defined the agent variable uh, by using this create CSV agent, uh, let's launch the agent by just uh, running this cell agent. And as soon as we, we run this, we can already see in the output that within the agent executor, the contents of the CSV file is right here. And then let's start, um, uh, let's start asking some basic questions to the agent. So uh, first uh, you do agent.llmchain.prompt uh, agent and template. And the first question I ask to the agent is um, this, how many rows and columns are there in the data frame? And in the output, just note these green portion because that's what will give you the thoughts of the agent, the thoughts of the AI. All right, now let's see now the output. Uh, so it says that thought I need to find the shape of the data frame because I have asked it to for rows and columns, which is included within data frame shape. That's the first thought of the agent. And uh, then the action Python RPL AST and action input is DF dot shape observation 156.9 and uh, now the final thought is i know i now know the final answer and the final answer is data frame has 150 rows and nine columns and that's exactly the output the final output this is what you will see and which matched with uh, what we saw when we ran df dot shape earlier next question i want to ask is what do you know about the data frame going by the column names and let's see what it says uh yep thought i should look at the column names to get an idea of what the data sets uh, is about uh again it's launching python ripple ast action df dot columns and the final output is that i can see that the data set contains information about countries regions such as their overall rank score gdp final answer that's the final answer next question can you give me the correlation metrics among score gdp per capita freedom to make life choices uh, generosity so i'm just taking the column names and uh, uh, the final output it is actually giving the correlation among them but uh, this is given in a table tab tabular format it's not really in a matrix format my next question for the agent is what conclusion can you make seeing the result of the above correlation matrix and it thought is i need to look at the data to make a conclusion uh, launching python ripple ast uh, df dot correlation that's the action it is doing and let's see the final answer final answer is the correlation metric shows that there is a strong positive correlation between gdp per capita social support and healthy life expectancy 
and a moderate positive correlation between freedom to make life choices and generosity this is also moderate positive uh, correlation between perceptions of corruption and generosity all right next one are there missing data in the data frame uh, this should be very easy one for the agent and it says i should check the missing values action python rpl ast action input data df dot is null dot sum uh, that's the exact method i would have used that's what the action that's what the agent is doing here as well and final answer no there are no missing values in the data frame because it, as you can see when it runs the df dot is null dot sum it uh, gives the output that it gets is this uh, table where where it shows the sum values for is null is all zero so that's a base of its answer and then what are the unique regions in the data frame and uh, its thought is i need to find the unique values in the country or region column uh, that's right and action input df country or region dot unique and you get this output all right and uh, next question plot a bar plot showing up 10 regions by their score uh, this score is a happiness score uh, in the table and i'm also asking show the regions along the x-axis and their score along the y-axis and the agent uh, starts thinking i need to uh, sort the data frame by score and then plot the top 10 uh, df dot sort dot values by score ascending falls head 10 plot dot bar x equal to country or region y equal to score all right that should plot it uh, final answer a bar plot showing the top 10 regions by their score with the regions along x-axis and their score along the y-axis and this is the plot that uh, the agent drew and that's exactly what i wanted so finland is a top country by score and that's the top uh, top 10 countries and next question I want to ask is horizontal bar plot showing what's, uh, what is the ratio of the factors affecting the happiness score according to the regions including only top 10 regions by their happiness score. And uh, thought is I need to get the data from the top 10 regions by their happiness score. Action input is df.sort values by score ascending falls head 10. Uh, Alright so this is a plot it drew. Uh, horizontal plot uh, with the top 10 countries uh, and the factors affecting the happiness score and we can see for example austria and this is a color code for the happiness score of various parameters a uh, various metric for happiness all right so that's just towards example uh, you can of course do much more creative uh, work by including more creative uh, statement text-based statement to the agent and yep uh, do experiment with uh, various prompts and let me know in the comment thanks for watching see you in the next one